guys welcome back to my channel today i wanted to sit down and share with you my ovulation test line progression i will show you my line progression for the month that we got pregnant i am currently when i'm filming this i'm three weeks and three days pregnant so like incredibly early um but i've been saving tracking um organizing my ovulation tests for the past three cycles and I actually had one other cycle, but I can't find it. So I have three cycles um, to share with you. And you can see my tests laid out. Um, you can see when my tests started to get high, when I hit my peak, um, and when they started going back down again. I will say that I use the Easy at Home strip test. I bought the package that has, I think, 50 LH strips and 20, 25 pregnancy tests. I will link it down below because it's absolutely fantastic. I know that testing for ovulation can be so tricky and so confusing. Um, and I know that there are digital ovulation kits out there, um, a bunch of different ways of testing. I've always found the strip tests, although tricky, to always kind of be the easiest way to go um, especially financially <laughs> it can be a whole lot cheaper to buy a pack of 50 strip tests than to keep rebuying re the um, digital ovulation tests especially if you're new to tracking your cycle and new to tracking your ovulation so just a few things well first i'm not a doctor obviously i'm not a fertility specialist if you have any specific questions to your cycle consult with your doctor consult with your ovulation specialists your fertility specialist i guess um i will also say that from my understanding a, a peak ovulation test is when you get a line that is as dark if not darker than your control line so on an ovulation test strip like ovulation test strips 101 there are two lines that show up and unlike a pregnancy test um uh, you will you'll more often than not see two lines on an ovulation test throughout your cycle that does not mean if you see two lines it does not mean automatically that it's a positive test and that you're ovulating um, when you get an actual positive ovulation test or you're really looking for your peak ovulation the test line is as dark if not darker than your control line another tricky thing with ovulation tests is that you want to go by the first time you see that control line Sorry, you see the test line as dark as the control line, which again is kind of tricky. Um, you can have multiple LH surges throughout your cycle, but there will only be, from my understanding, one LH surge that results in you releasing an egg. So it can be tricky to pinpoint that fertile window, but the more you can test, the more cycles you can test, the better position you'll be in then to really pinpoint your fertile window and then hopefully get pregnant. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you these tests, talk you through it. It will hopefully make a little more sense if you're new to testing. Um, and yeah, let's get, let me uh, grab, grab you guys. Here we go, friends. So I will start with the first cycle that I have in my notebook. This is um, a cycle that we didn't actually try. So we tried the cycle before this and I did not get pregnant. This cycle we decided not to try, but I still tested my ovulation. I started on cycle day five. So what you want to do is you want to start a few days after your period. I started the day after my period ended. My periods are normally nine times out of 10, four days in length with a little bit of spotting on day five. I just wanted to be sure. So I started testing on cycle day five. Also with testing LH, normally you have your LH surge in the morning and then it'll be detectable in your urine by the time like midday so some fertility specialists will say to test from 10 to 2 I start testing in the morning test in the afternoon and test in the evening which is why test strips like this are a financially smart idea for me so this first test was 1127 as you can see you see two lines here but that does not mean that it's a positive test um, the line starts to get darker, which is great. And then it wasn't until cycle day 10 that I got my high test. And I have here 0 0.84. What does that mean? So the Easy at Home um, has an app. I think it's called Pregmate. Here, I can show it to you. Oh, sorry. It's called Premom. Premom. So this is the app that goes along with the test strips. And this will actually, um, you can upload your results onto the app and it will show you your test, which is really cool. So here I'll show it. So these are my easy at home ovulation tests that I uploaded. I take a picture of them. They upload to the app, which is really cool. And then the app will give me an estimate sort of number of, and then like high, lower peak and what they think 
the test is, which I think is really neat. So this one was high, cycle day 10, which made sense. And then the test line started to get darker, started to get darker. And then I got my really dark test on cycle day 11 that you can see right here. And that was, that came up in the app as peak. So 2.06 peak. My next test was pretty dark. That was cycle day 11 at 12, cycle day 11 at 4.30, it was still pretty dark. And then it started to get lighter after that. So cycle day 12, the next day at 8.30 in the morning, it was really light. So I could be pretty convinced that I had, that this cycle day 11, 12 o'clock test was in fact peak, which meant that I was going to release an egg 12 to 36 hours after this test. So that's what that peak means. Peak means that you're going to release an egg in the next 12 to 36 hours. So that's like your, your peak, peak time to try to have a baby, to try to make a baby. So um, this test started bleeding a little bit, which you'll see there, but I stopped testing on cycle day 13. Um, some doctors will also recommend just stop testing after you get your peak because your body can have other LH surges. They don't want to confuse you. And really it's all about that first peak test. Um, but sometimes it is nice if you know that you don't have any like if you don't normally surge um, multiple times during your cycle, it is kind of nice to see the line start to go down a bit. So that was that cycle. Then this next cycle we did actually try and you'll see I started testing cycle day seven. It was very light, my tests were very light. Started to get darker and then I got a high result on cycle day nine at 7.30 p.m. and that was 1.08. And then my peak was very much, like this cycle was very cut and dry. I got my peak test cycle day 10 at 2.45 in the afternoon. And that test is considerably darker than all the others. So that's how I knew that was peak. And the good thing is if you're like, oh, well, it's kind of confusing because at 7.20 in the morning, like that line looks pretty dark. If you test one time a day, then you can sort of avoid the confusion. <laughs> so again, I'm not a doctor. I don't really know what I recommend personally. I know from my own experience, testing two to three times a day always sort of helps me kind of pinpoint exactly where I have my peak, but I'm, I'm not denying that it can be quite confusing. And then after um, cycle day 10, you can see the test lines start to get lighter, 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 and then completely disappear by cycle day 16. And then... So I did not get pregnant that month. This is the cycle that I did get pregnant. So I'll show you these ovulation test strips. Cycle day five, I started testing. I still had spotting that day. I also had spotting cycle day six. So I could see the test lines getting darker, 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 darker. Now this was a bit of a confusing month because I normally get, you know, peak or high tests around cycle day 10 or 11. And it wasn't until cycle day 12 that I got my peak. So as you can see, I was testing so often that it was starting to become hard to see the difference in the, in the color of the lines, um, which I don't recommend, but here we are. Um, my peak, I believe, was actually cycle day 12 at 8 p.m. So I know that this line here, cycle day 13 at 6 a.m., looks darker. I think, I think it's picking up darker. It does look a little darker than this one. However, again, why ovulation test strips can be a little confusing is if the test line, you want to go by the, when the test line is darker or as dark as the control line. And I truly feel like this test here was when this line here was as dark as this line. So maybe it wasn't darker than this line, right? Because this test, this line is darker than this line but I still think this was my peak. And you know, there's not much more I can say, or like there's no other way that I can really prove that. Um, and this time period, sorry, I almost dropped the camera. This time period was so short, right? Cycle day 12, 8, 8 p.m. was when I got this test that I believe was my peak. Cycle day 13, the app said that this was my peak at 6 a.m. But I mean, does it really, like, it doesn't really matter. Only It only matters in that, annoyingly, this is overnight, right? So when I was tracking my DPO, which you'll see here, it was so hard to tell like which DPO I was on because when did I ovulate? Did I ovulate cycle day 12 at 8 p.m. or did I ovulate cycle day 13 at, not ovulate, I'm sorry. Did I like, when was that time period, right? Like, was I ovulating 12 hours 
or 24 hours after 8 p.m. or was I ovulating 12 or 24 hours after 6 a.m.? So again, it might be better not to test so often. <laughs> However, if you really wanna see that progression, then, then do you. So <laughs> here's my ovulation test line progression. It's a lot, I'm not doubting that it's not maybe a little excessive. I stopped testing on cycle day 14. Um, I have very intense ovulation symptoms, so I just knew. I actually stopped feeling the ovulation symptoms on cycle day 13, which is why I believe that I actually did ovulate on cycle day 13 later in the day, um, that my peak really was cycle day 12 at 8 p.m. Um, and then I just knew cycle day 14 that like that, that, was, that I was done, um, and I stopped testing. And because this, this cycle was a little uh, more tedious than my other ones. I didn't want to record any other LH surges. I didn't want to like freak myself out. So friends, I hope you found that helpful. I 1000% I get that testing for ovulation, especially with strips can be a little confusing. And I will say this past cycle with all of that testing, I mean, we did luckily get pregnant. So I'm, I'm so incredibly happy for that. But this cycle was a little more confusing than my other cycles. It wasn't as cut and dry. Normally my cycles are really cut and dry and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Um, but I think testing for LH is a really fantastic way of getting to know your body, especially if you want to get pregnant and really want to pinpoint your fertile days. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will leave a link to that easy at home um, ovulation predictor kit. Again, comes with 50 LH tests, so you can test as often as me, as well as 20 or 25 pregnancy tests. So if you're doing uh, pregnancy test line progressions, that's a really great uh, resource to use. I love the Easy at Home pre-mom app. I think it's fantastic and a really nice way. Again, if you're new to testing your ovulation, um, new to testing, uh, for ovulation, I should say, then that's a really uh, great place to start. If you have any other questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Like I mentioned, I am not a medical professional, but um, this is our third baby, and I have been testing uh, my cycles for a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.